Hello and welcome to the Auntie Lisa Show! What shall we do a story about today? Let's see. El Fuego! Do, 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 do. Auntie Lisa Alexander Christopher. I don't even know why I pulled that one out, we just know. Andy! Good old Andy, time traveller. Random box, this one. Some bees. Love a bee. Uh, we're done. <clears throat> Let's see. A slide. Nice. Good. Um, a volcano. Hmm. Let's do a couple more things from one of these. The hairs of havoc. And one more from here. Claire. Right. <clears throat> Let's begin. So <clears throat> one day oh I've blown on with it. One day Auntie Lisa, Alexander and Christopher decided to go to a volcano now. Ordinarily, that's not a good idea, but <clears throat> they were feeling adventurous. So, they packed their bags and off they went to a ginormous volcano and they climbed up the side of it. Now, it was quite dangerous. So it's a wonder that they decided to do this at all. But the reason that they decided to go on this mission to climb the volcano was that they heard that on the volcano someone had put the most enormous slide. So, <clears throat> off they went with their backpacks to uh, the country with the volcano in, which was called Japan. And they have a big volcano there. Or is it a mountain? <laughs> Anyway, somewhere in Southeast Asia, let's go somewhere in Southeast Asia. It was hot and very sunny and very humid and sticky. And there was lots and lots of creatures flying around in the air around them. <clears throat> so anyway, they had decided to go and climb this volcano and then check out all the molten lava and then slide down the other side. Like, whee! So, climbing up... So hot, when all of a sudden there was a big noise and the noise went and the ground shook and Auntie Lisa thought this was a bad idea. Oh. So they realised that the volcano was preparing to erupt. Oh no! All the information had been wrong. It was a very, very dangerous expedition, not just a bit dangerous. So they thought, right, we've got to get away from the volcano. But then, all of a sudden, loads and loads of bees appeared and they were like bzzz, flying all around Aunt Elisa and Alexander and Christopher and they were like, crazy what is going on well <clears throat> as luck would have it the bees were actually trying to help them which is not something you realize about bees they're very friendly and the bees were buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and they were trying to shoo alexander christopher and Aunt Lisa away from the volcano. So that was really cool. The volcano was going 
and the ground was going brrrr, and Auntie Lisa and Alexander and Christopher were like, whoa, whoa, but the bees made a little arrow sign. They all gathered together, all the little bees, and it went ding, 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 go this way, arrow sign. And Alexander and Auntie Lisa and Christopher went, do you think the bees are in formation, making an arrow sign for us? And Alexander and Auntie Lisa and Christopher went, it's our best shot to get off this volcano before it erupts and we get turned into fossils. Or at least frizzled like a sausage on a fire. So they followed the bees. Still sweaty hot. And the volcano's going. And loads of smoke is starting to come out of the top. All this for the world's biggest slide. This was a big mistake. Oh. Anyway, keep running. And then at last, <clears throat> they made it to the edge of the slide. Not the top of the slide, just the edge of the slide. And just as the volcano was going, <laughs> they all slid whee, down the rest of the slide, which was quite cool, actually. Although they would have preferred it without the volcano about to erupt around them. And so they got to the bottom of the volcano via the slide and the bees continued with their little arrow sign. Wee, this way, this way, this way. <clears throat> and Alexander and Christopher and Auntie Lisa thought, that's pretty cool that the bees had helped them escape the volcano. But now what did they want? So the bees led them through a jungle. So there's lots of jungles in these places. And they're walking through the jungle until they found a massive beehive. But the massive beehive was dangling from a tree. It's one of those big round bees nest things. It was dangling from a tree that was on the very edge of a great big crack in the ground. And they could see just molten lava at the bottom of the crack where the earth had gone <coughs> with the earthquake that had started off and started triggering this volcano. And Alexander and Christopher and Nantes went, oh, they must need us to save their beehive. Oh, wow. What are we going to do? OK, right. <sighs> we might need to call in some help for this activity. <clears throat> so... They called up their friend, Elfwego, Elfwego, Elfwego. And he flew in on his stunt plane. And he, went, he landed just on a big uh, flat bit that was handy. And went, hey, how's it going, everybody? What's wrong? And Alexander and Christopher and Auntie Lisa said, what, well, the bees' nest, the bees saved us from the volcano, which, by the way, is still starting to erupt. And we need to rescue their bees' nest. Can, can we put it in your plane? And Elfwego went, OK, that sounds like a great idea. What could possibly go wrong? <clears throat> wow. So they carefully, Alexander and Christopher, climbed up the tree very carefully. And they just pull the bees' nest off the tree branch, which snapped in their hands. Now, ooh, it was very heavy. And then they dropped it. Ah! And Auntie Lisa and Alfredo went, Ay! and they caught it. And I was just, just about saved. Nearly fell off the cliff. And then they put it very carefully. All the bees were buzzing around going, whoa, I'm not sure about this. They put it in the stunt plane. And Alfuego said, hey, so where are we going to put this bee's nest? And all the bees were buzzing around going, and it's on and Christopher and I was like, I don't, I don't know. What are we going to do with it? I think we should call up some more help. <clears throat> Who do we know that knows lots about animals? Maybe someone who works in a museum could help us. <gasps> the Natural History Museum. They know loads about animals. Let's call Andy. So they called up Andy and they go, bidu, 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 bidu. hello, Andy. Uh -huh. Yes, it's Alexander and Christopher. 
Uh huh. Yeah, no, no, we're just asking for some help. What? No, stop eating your sandwich and listen. Right, we've got these bees. Yes, I know you do dinosaurs. We've got these bees and they need a new home. Can you think of a new home for them, please? And Andy said, well, I actually know that dinosaurs love honey. Not many people realise that. So maybe if you speak to Claire at um, Jurassic World, she might like to have those bees and then they can make honey for all the dinosaurs. And he said, OK, bye bye. <clears throat> so Alexander and Christopher rang up Claire and they explained they've got this bees nest that needs a new home. And Claire said, whoa, that would be amazing. We would love to have a bees nest. Yes, please. Well, um, so what they did was they all climbed into the stunt plane with the bees and the bees all went back inside their nest and just went and held on really tight because they knew they were going on a plane ride because they were very smart bees. And then they flew the bees all the way to Jurassic World. And when they landed... All the bees buzzed around super happily and they put the bees nest up in a really nice spot in Jurassic World which was uh, just next door to a really big field of loads and loads of flowers for the bees to eat and everyone thought well that's probably the end of the story <laughs> except that we've not had the hairs of havoc yet so all of a sudden, one of the dinosaurs got a bit overexcited about the bees and the honey. And it was the T-Rex. And the T-Rex started trying to escape from his enclosure. It was like, bam, bam, bam. And everyone went, oh, the honey's not ready yet, T-Rex. Bam, bam, bam. And they were, oh, man, maybe this bees nest idea was not such a good one after all. What are we going to do? We need some extra reinforcements to rebuild the T-Rex enclosure before he escapes. Who do we know who could be super good at that and super speedy? Let's get the Hairs of Havoc and Emmett. Because Emmett is a really great builder. And so they call them up. Quick, come and help us. We need to rebuild the T-Rex enclosure before he escapes. And so Emmett came in. Um, really super fast in a helicopter that Sky flew for him because she's kind like that. And the Hairs of Havoc came along on their motorbikes. <clears throat> and they went, what do you want us to do? What are we going to do? And Emmett said, we need to reinforce the T-Rex enclosure. <sighs> well, the T-Rex was like this. <laughs> honey, honey, honey. Nobody thought to just move the bee's nest, by the way. Honey, honey. And he was starting to break through the netting. And just in the nick of time, Emmett rebuilt a wall. And the, the, the hairs of habit were chucking in bricks, passing them along. Quick, 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 quick. And it went... Bosh. And the T-Rex went... Now, poops. And then they all sat down and went... What a random day we've had. And the bees came out of their bees nest and made a lovely heart shape in the sky. Like this. Bzzz. And they went, aww, thanks bees. They love us. And then they all had a nice sit down and a cup of tea and an ice cream and said, what a great job we did today rescuing the bees. But in future, we're not going to visit any more volcanoes, okay? And everyone agreed that visiting volcanoes, even if it had a slide on it, was a really silly idea. And that's the end of the story. Love you. Mwah.